let's talk about the media today. Um, we talk uh, in, within our business and, and uh, the internship about seeing the matrix, the idea of um, not just seeing things for how they're presented to you, but seeing the kind of Looking a little deeper. Yeah, yeah. And, and why it's presented in a certain way mm. and who's uh, cue bono, who benefits. Yeah. It's a good Latin expression. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so with the media, it's very important to always be mindful that the media's job, the, the model of media is to sell your attention to advertisers generally. This is the ABC, different. But they're competing for eyeballs. Um, and it's not to make you more informed and educate you. That's not their KPI that determines whether they live or die. It's, it's how many viewers, how many clicks, how many follow-throughs, you know, time on websites, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but the problem is that most of us use what we see, what comes up in our Facebook feed, what we see in the paper, as our, one of our primary, one of our main means of educating ourselves. Um, and particularly around sports science, obviously stuff will come up and it'll be a lot of talk. Uh, and this week, an awesome... A doozy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a great one came up. Um, and it was a report in a radio... So it was a radio NZ's website. Yep. And the title was Ice Baths, A Bone Chilling Waste of Time. Yeah. Like, Fighting words. Yes. Strong, and so, yeah, strong opinion straight up. And so then everyone's sharing it and they're tagging their friends and tagging their strength, their fitness. For, for, I can't friends. believe you made me ice birds all this time. And, and a lot of times there's always some will tag and go, what do you think? Or do you agree with this? Yeah. And then, you know, the yeah. debate ensues. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and so, yeah. yeah. And so this, so the article says. This is, this is the blog article, the, the actual, yeah. the fluff, the media piece, if you will. This is, this is the media piece, yeah. Um, it says that uh, a new study by an international team, which includes scientists from the University of Auckland, um, and is a great team, like as a big, big bunch study. of bunch of Queensland, it's Queensland Institute of Sport, Queensland universities. Um, I think it was Centre of Excellence for Applied Sports Science Also research, Norway, Queensland. University in Japan. So he like a, a big big group of teams got this done and got this sorted together. Like Ten sports scientists. Yep. Yeah, like yeah. Uh, not a B team, like. Good operators, like yeah, serious stuff. Um, anyway, uh, a new study by an international team, which includes scientists, blah blah blah, has shown that immersion in cold water does not reduce inflammation. So that's the lead is a waste of time because it doesn't reduce inflammation. Yep. Uh, blah, 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 blah. David Cameron Smith is a professor of nutrition at the Ligons Institute. He says they are a bone chilling waste of time. Blah 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 blah. Um, but the research has found that the process of inflammation is very important in speeding up the process of repair. So at the top you've got... Doesn't reduce inflammation. And then a paragraph and a half later it says, research found that the process of inflammation is important in recovery. So, so it doesn't reduce inflammation, but inflammation is important. Yeah, well, that's okay. What? And so most of us are now like, hey, well, what's, what's your sense of inflammation? Moving on. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, the research in fact found there was no reduction in muscle inflammation. Um, at, at the very bottom of the article, uh, from uh, so it was David Cameron Smith has said um, the research doesn't have a large impact on elite athletes, other than ice baths being a waste of time, as elite athletes have already had the maximal gains in terms of their strength. Now, I think it's probably been misquoted in a way that happens really, really commonly. Yeah. Um, research has found that the most important thing for recovery after an intense bout of exercise is sleep. A lot of elite athletes. Performing late at night, it's hard for them to switch off, and so ice bars are a way of switching off. Um, so, so in the same paragraph here, we've got for elite athletes, ice bars are a waste of time, and then three lines later, a lot of athletes, a lot of elite athletes are performing quite late at night. It's extremely hard for them to switch off, so ice bars are a way to switch off, but they're a waste important. of time. The sleep is because <laughs> so sleep's important, the most important thing, and ice bars help you get to sleep. But, as you read before, I said the ice bars were a waste of time. And I don't think that's David Cameron Smith's fault. I think that's... No, that's, that's putting that's together it. a piece from here and a piece from there and a piece from there, and then it, making their own bits up. Because they've got clickbait, a bunch of waste of time, and they're just trying to make everything fit in with that. Um, they didn't do a great job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, anyway. but they've got a lot of clicks and a lot of views on that, that so, article. So, bone-chilling waste of time is the takeaway there. Now, a lot of people will say, I've had a few people say, oh, well, studies have shown blah, blah, blah. People love saying that. And my thing is, okay, show me the study, I'll read it, then we'll talk about it. Like the, um, Does that, yeah. yeah. Um, so, um, I printed out the study. 44 pages long. It's um, quite comprehensive. Uh, and I think it's quite interesting uh, to spend a tiny bit of time 
uh, skimming through this. Yeah, so the this is the behind the scenes of what they took some parts of this and made their clickbaity article. Yeah. But then if you go, hang on, well, what does it actually say about ice baths and or their effect on inflammation and or recovery and or the body? That's that's pretty interesting. And you don't. And the thing is, you don't have to be Inspector Clouseau. No. You don't have to deep dive into page forty-four to get the answer. So. Now, the first, first of all, the title is a lot less clickbaity. The effects of cold water immersion and active recovery on inflammation and cell stress responses in human skeletal muscle after resistance training. <gasps> so it's, it's yeah, yeah. It's good. So yeah. um, so let's let's before we dive into this, let's let's couch it in uh, real world terms. So I'm a believer in ice baths. Uh, I think they're uh, highly effective at. Um, you have an athlete who's in fight or flight mode, they're in, in full sympathetic mode and it's very hard to get to sleep after sport and you might have a game the next day and you want them to be able to get to a good night's sleep. I've, I've always maintained that's the benefit you get from ice bars. It's the fact that they're shunting you into sleepy mode, into rest and digest mode, into recovery mode. Which initially to a lot of people seems, those who haven't had ice bars in a while seems quite serious. Mm. They're not making me relax, but they do. Initially there's that holy hell, this is freezing cold, but there's an initial uptick, but then is it, on the back of this, is a rapid drop into parasympathetic and relax mode. Yeah. Cool your body temperature down, you bring your core back to neutral. It has all these effects on the, the nervous system and the systemic, so sort of the whole, whole system of the body, which relaxes the body and puts you in the kind, of, kind of shunts you back, it forces you to back into a great state to get really good recovery. Um, and so that's, when I, was, I remember talking to a long time ago to the Opal's exercise physiologist, Don, Dr. 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 Donna, I'm stuttering, Dr. Donna O'Connor. And she was like, yeah, like they don't think that the benefit was anything to do with inflammation, it was just parasympathetic. Um, so that's the benefit, it's shunting you back. Um, page one of the key point summary in here, um, these responses that so they had, and the study is... Um, nine, nine, nine males, they did uh, 10 minutes of bike one week, and then they did 10 minutes of ice recovery after a strenuous leg press, lunges, leg extensions, like this intense quad workout. And then they did either 10 minutes of light bike or 10 minutes of ice bath, and then they compared with a muscle biopsy the signs of inflammation, signs of protein damage and stuff like that. And what they found was uh, no real difference. So whether you rode on the bike for 10 minutes or with your ice baths, it didn't actually change the inflammatory response. It didn't blunt the inflammatory response, which is what was the theory. Yep. So that's that's the basic summary. It's just very easy to get to that straight away. Uh, you go to the abstract, and it says it in a little, little more detail. Changes in inflammatory cells, cytokines, neurotropins, and HSPs did not differ significantly between the recovery treatments. These findings indicate that cold water immersion is no more effective than active recovery for reducing inflammation. And so that's not saying it's bad, just says it's, it's no not, better. It's no different. Yeah. Uh, an interesting aside on the, on the abstract, there's only nine participants, which is a pretty small Relatively study, small. Yeah. Um, even by muscle biopsy standards. Yeah. Um, uh, and so in, in the introduction, they talk about how there's been postulated the idea that cold water immersion uh, will have a negative response by modulating inflammation, because studies by this group have previously found that over a 12 week period, doing it after every session, actually reduce the adaptive response. Yeah, the theory being that if you're blocking, because inflammation is actually a positive part yeah. of the re recovery and regeneration process, if you block that every single session, so if you basically just take that away, over, do that chronically over 12 weeks, you can effectively block your body's ability to supercompensate and yeah. improve. Yeah, because you, you, we're adding damage and the body adapts to the damage. But if you keep taking the damage straight away, yeah. But yeah. you're just tiring yourself up for no, no purpose. Yeah. Comes exercise um, and training. And so they go through the details in terms of the neutrophil and the macro, uh, macrophage infiltration, all the, like they, they go into really big detail. Uh, talk about the design, we can just skip. And it, I wanted to touch on this because the level of rigor and detail they go, like it's a it's book. Enormous. It's a book. Yeah, and, it, and the, the, it's not just, oh, I think I'll look at this. Like it's a six, probably six month thing. Mm. Like it's a, it's a long time. Um, skip ahead the method to the results though. Yeah. So we skip to the back. Even, even beyond the results, which we've already kind of talked about, the discussion. Yeah, the discussion. Uh, so first thing I think uh, of a little bit of interest to talk about is uh, the fact that um, they, as most sports science studies, or many sports science Not studies... Not even sports do, science, just science in general where they're studying, doing human... As, as many studies do. Studies. They excluded women because of issues with the menstrual cycle influencing estrogen and that influence in the results of the study women don't make as easy a population to gather um, physiological data from. 
And so it's much more straightforward if you just go with, with blokes. Um, there's a point even, I'll trip see if I can find the video, there's a point where it was literally they just did men. Like it was 100% men, men, men. Because it's just, it's, it's, a, it's one less variable. Because if you do the, if you do the group one week and then you do the same group with a different control mm -hmm. seven days later, and you're a part of the cycle, then you change everything and that can influence inflammation. And, so, and, and that's just, that is what it is like, but it's, it's, it's of interest I think. But that means this whole study is only applicable to 50% of the population from the start. And then that, that's it, that's it. We acknowledge that our results may not be applicable to women. So that's, that's just interesting. Um, not like super at the heart of this, but it's an interesting aside. Um, so when we get to the business end of this, um, here is what the, the conclusion of the discussion about the study is. The 44 page so, academic paper so concludes with. <laughs> let's go back to nine, nine minutes ago. Uh, bone chilling waste of time is what the media says they said. Here's what they actually said. Cold water immersion consistently improves perceptions of fatigue and muscle soreness. Stanley et al. 2012. So that's a reference to one of the papers. And enhances recovery of muscle function slash performance following exercise. Leader et al. 2011. Versi et al. 2013. Roberts et al. 2014. It also re reduces clinical signs of inflammation such as limb swelling, edema after exercise. Yan Yanag yeah, you, Sawa. You started with I, no, I really regret that. <laughs> I'm just, I don't know. I was going to let you have that. <laughs> uh, et al. Um, therefore, it would appear that cold water immersion may still confer some short-term clinical and or functional benefits for athletes without any changes in local inflammatory reactions within skeletal muscle during recovery from exercise. Periodic use of cold water immersion may assist athletes when they need to recover quickly, quickly between training sessions or competitive events. Competitive events. However, in the long term, in the, in the long term, regular cold water immersion appears to be detrimental. So, what they're saying is, if you have a short game turnaround, or you're in the middle of a season and you're training it on Tuesday, and you need to recover, ice baths are wonderful. Ice baths. Ice baths. Ice baths. I think I'm ice baths. Yeah. So, like the complete, <laughs> basically the complete opposite of what the yeah. media. So, fluff piece so are not about. bone chilling waste of time. Actively helpful on multiple dimensions. Resets the nervous system, reduces muscle soreness, enhances functional ability. Allows you to recover quicker. Like, it's just win, win, win. <laughs> and <laughs> this, is, this is one, this is a, class, this is a great example for us to talk about this, but it's, it's, it's a bigger topic of the idea that we get so much information now from shorter bites, yeah. and the shorter the video, or the shorter yeah. the piece of content, and so often it's like, ah, and we need, you need, the guy, so we're big foam rolling fans, and we did a video mm. about that mm. last week, Perfect. and people will see, people, the, guy, the guys that write, we love foam rolling, you should foam roll, this is a good way to do foam rolling, will not get any clicks, except no, that one guy who goes, foam rolling, complete waste of time. Everyone's like, whoa, there's a story. Then you go and read that article, and he says, actually, you probably shouldn't roll your ITB, because it's so, it's so tenderness and doesn't really change. But he then goes on to say that I sound like, yeah, you're probably getting some results from the lateral quad underneath. But the headline, foam rolling waste of time, is what draws you in. And people often will just say, ah, all right, stop my foam rolling routine. And then yeah, on. yeah. So um, the moral of the story is um, you need to go to the source material. I, I think you need to assume that uh, the media is going to be relatively, if you, if you legitimately, genuinely care about an issue, if you're a coach, if you're an athlete, um, go to a bit of source material or go to people who are the kind of people that go to source material and actually deep dive onto what you need to know about the thing. Um, and yeah, and it didn't, it didn't take that long. You could have just skipped, you could have just skipped right to the end of that. And I could have skipped reading the 44 pages and just read the last page. You, you, yeah, you could have read, read the intro to see just some background on the yeah. topic and then the, the discussion to see their results and how they compared to previous mm -hmm. results. You don't have to be a PhD or a doctor or a scientist mm. in that field. You just have to be genuinely curious and have a rough idea. Mm. And you can, you know, it's like, hang on, let me actually go see what they said. And then it's basically the complete opposite the complete of what that opposite. confusing piece of media said. And so now we've got maybe a generation of people who are not going to ice bath because they believe it's yeah. a bone chilling waste of time, when in fact, meh, it might have a bit of benefit. Yeah. And the general obviously just never read that article. No way. They ask, they ask the questions and, you know. But, they got, yeah, anyway. yeah, but anyway, uh, uh, the great thing out of this is it stimulated a bit of discussion about it, uh, so there's that. Um, on the ice bath thing, I, I think um, some people become like, you should always do them. It's like, I feel ice baths are 
wonderful in certain settings. If we have a Saturday game with the, with the Melbourne Boomers, mm -hmm. if we've got a Saturday game and then a Sunday game, every time you want you want an ice bath. I think it's really important. But I think doing it week in, week out, I'm less certain because I, athletes in team, team sport athletes have a finite diligence budget. Yeah, you've only got so many recovery dollars to spend, diligence dollars to spend, yeah. Yeah, and so if you make them ice bath, then maybe they won't be as likely to roll or stretch properly. Or they, I think over the course of, of a long season, you've got to be judicious with your application of protocols. You don't can't just make them do all the things all the time. Mm. Uh, and so for me, um, I, so I asked Dr. Darren Burgess when I was at a seminar with him the other week what he thought, and he said, oh, ice baths are good. I think they're a one percenter. Yeah. Um, and I think that's... Cherry on top type stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's still important to do them if you need to, but it's not an all the time thing. Um, yeah, active recovery, uh, ice baths, even Stevens. Cool. Cool.